everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylee June and I'm a beauty and fashion photographer based near Sydney, Australia. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can fix overexposed hotspots. Now, overexposed areas in photos have definitely been the bane of my existence while shooting outdoors and while shooting in natural light in recent years and specifically with shooting beauty because as soon as you've got a hotspot on the skin, sometimes it can just ruin that quality of an image. And I really, really hate seeing them in my images. But fortunately, there are a few little tricks that you can do to help this situation. If you do have any hotspots in your images, there is actually something that you can do in Photoshop to correct this. So I'm going to show you how you can fix that today. And without further ado, let's get into the video. So now we're in Photoshop and we've got our image here. So I'm going to be working on this image to remove some of the hotspots that we can clearly see over the cheekbone and the forehead and particularly the chin as well. So a lot of the time you'll have images that are slightly overexposed and you might be able to bring them back if they're shot in raw to a relatively good point. However, sometimes when you've had a really off image, like you might've still been testing the light, but then you realize later it's actually a great image. It's just that you've got those hot spots in the image and you might not be able to bring it back enough with raw processing. That's when this kind of technique is really helpful. So looking at the cheek here, we can see that it is quite overexposed. There's really not a lot of detail there and particularly on the chin here, I can't bring that back any further. So what I'm going to do is start working on it using frequency separation. Now I do have an older tutorial on my channel that is all about frequency separation and I do have a video on dodge and burn versus frequency separation that I'm going to put down in the comments section below. So if you're a little bit unsure of how the technique works, then you can go and watch those videos and see how the technique actually works as a whole. Now in the video that I've done previously, it's a little bit more of an older technique of using frequency separation. And usually with frequency separation, you'll have two main layers, which will be a high frequency layer, which will contain all of the texture of the image. Then you'll have the low frequency layer, and this is going to contain the color of the image. So you're gonna have those two different frequencies where most of the texture will be on the top layer, and then the color of the image will be on the bottom layer. And I'm going to create a frequency separation group of layers so you can see exactly how it works and see how you can make these layers yourself. So first off, we're going to duplicate our background layer twice. So to do this, I'm just going to drag the background layer into the new layer button, which is just here. And I'm going to do that again with the background copy, dragging it into that new layer button. So we now have two background copy layers. Now making sure that the background copy layer in the middle is selected, we're going to add a Gaussian blur to this layer. So going up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And usually with Gaussian blur, it really does vary on how you like to use frequency separation, but I do tend to have mine at between about 10 to 20 pixels, just so everything is nicely blurred. We don't want too much texture on this layer if possible and press okay. So this layer here is going to be our low frequency layer. So we've just created the low frequency layer, which as I mentioned before, contains most of the color in the image and a lot less texture. So we're going to rename this to low and then in brackets, I'll just put color. Now selecting the top layer, which is background copy two. We're going to go up to image and then down to apply image. So first we need to make sure that under layer here in the drop down menu, we are selecting the low layer. So the layer underneath, we also need to make sure that the blending mode here is set to subtract. And we also need to make sure that our scale is set to two and then 128 for offset. Now press okay. And then we also need to change the blending mode of this top layer here to linear light. Now it's come through as transparent and this will be our texture layer. So we're going to rename this to high frequency and then texture in brackets. So now if I turn the eye on and off on the texture layer, you can see it really does remove most of the texture. And then obviously with the color layer as well, turning that on and off, that removes that layer, but we still have our background layer intact just in case we need to go back on any of the adjustments that we've made here. So working on the color layer, you mainly are affecting the color of the image. Working on the texture, you're mainly adjusting the texture of the image. But the adjustment that we're actually going to do today is not gonna be focusing on these layers so much. So as I mentioned before, my previous tutorials on frequency separation have been a little bit more dated in terms of the technique. And nowadays what a lot of editors or photographers will do is they will add extra layers in between the frequencies. So as I said, you've got 
got your color and your texture layer. So what I like to do to adjust areas like the hotspots in this image is actually create a new blank layer. So this new blank layer is going to sit in between the higher texture layer and then the low color layer. And I'm just going to rename this layer to adjustments for now. So I like really having as much control as possible on my images while I'm editing. And I like to be as least destructive as possible when I'm working on them. So I don't always like working directly on the low color layer and the high texture layer, even though we've got our background layer still intact here. I do tend to avoid doing that if I can, only because it is containing a lot of the elements of the image. We've just split the frequencies. So working on this new blank layer, I'm going to easily be able to adjust anything that we do here. I can hide the layer. I can easily add a layer mask. So I'm not going to be affecting anything directly. But really what I like to do with this layer in particular is use the brush tool. So we're going to go over here and click on the brush tool, making sure that the hardness is set to 0%. We want this to be really soft. And I also like to have my flow at 1%, opacity at 100%. And if you're using a graphics tablet, just go to brush settings and make sure that transfer is ticked here with pen pressure also uh, the option under opacity jitter. So making my brush size a little bit bigger as well, we're actually going to paint onto this adjustment layer in between the frequencies of the high and low. And we're going to paint over these areas here of the hotspot. So it's really just going to tone them down a little bit more. So to do this, I'm actually going to hold down alt on the keyboard and I'm going to pick a color of the skin tone that's kind of nearby. So you can see alt or option for a Mac is going to bring up the eyedropper tool. So we're going to select a skin tone color, say around about here, just nearby. It's going to have to be fairly light. And then I'm just going to softly paint in this area here. And you can keep selecting different colors by holding down Alt or Option on the keyboard. And that will just help you to get a bit more variation in tone for those areas of the hotspots. So if I actually just turn that layer on and off, you can see that that's made a really big difference to how that hotspot is looking. It's really toned it down a lot and it's not the center of focus anymore on the model's face. So I'm going to continue just selecting color nearby from the skin tone and very gently running the brush over it. Cause you don't want to go too far with this. If I start painting a lot, you'll see that it starts to get very flat. So we don't want that. But this is the great thing about frequency separation and using it in this way is that it's actually not affecting the texture of the skin at all by doing this. We are beneath the texture layer, which will really help while we add a little bit more color to this area of the hotspot. So I'm going to start up the top here as well. Still sort of selecting nearby colors just to tone down this part of the skin. can also do this to tone down shadows as well, which is kind of cool. So as I said, really important not to go too far with this, but just enough so it really softens and tones down those overexposed bits. And now I'm going to work on the chin here as well. So again, just holding down Alt or Option for a Mac to get the eyedropper up and start selecting colors nearby in the skin tone. Okay, so let's just turn that layer on and off again. So that is the before and then that is the after. I'm just going to do a quick before and after a little bit further away this time. So before, after. If you do feel that the skin tone is getting a little bit flat, you can add a layer mask. So just by clicking this button here, and then you can use your brush tool again, but making sure that black is the selected color as we're painting onto a white mask. And you can just bring back some of that brightness. If you feel that you've taken it a little bit too far, you can bring back a little bit there. So just zooming out again, before, after, before, 
after. So it's a really quick technique that is really easy as well to do and to use. And it really does help soften those areas. I can do the same thing down here. So just switching back to the actual layer, I'm going to just softly paint over these parts here. And obviously I'm doing this on a portrait image, but if you're a landscape photographer or you're a product photographer and you've got the same issues, uh, you can use a very similar technique just by using the color and the brush tool to help soften those areas. So I'm pretty happy with that overall. So let's do a quick before and after again. So before, after, and I'll do one a little bit further out before, after. So hopefully this technique in the tutorial today has helped you out with this particular problem that is quite common with photographers and retouchers. And let me know if you did give it a try and how it worked for you in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching this video today. And let me know in the comments section below if you'd like to see more videos like this one. Please remember to give this video a like if you liked it. And remember to subscribe as well if you haven't already to my channel. I'll be posting a lot more tutorials like this one in future. But thank you all so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.